All right. Well, good evening, everybody. It's good to see each and every one of you. We want to welcome you out to the One Way Assembly Bible study where Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except he be drawn by him. And it's truly a blessing that God has drawn each and every one of you out tonight. To God be the glory. I know you've had a blessed and prosperous day today, and it's just good to see all of you. We want to welcome, welcome, welcome you in tonight. Make sure you have your Bibles, whether it's a Bible particular app on your cell phone or tablet, or if you have a paperback or hardback, whatever you have, bring it on in because you're going to definitely need it tonight. And we have been definitely studying a very interesting lesson. Since the beginning of the year, we've been dealing with a subject matter entitled Building Your House Solid Ground in 2024. And I'm quite sure a lot of you or enjoying the beginning of this year, and maybe some are not. But the good thing is that we know that it rains on the just as well as the unjust. It's good to see all of you on Facebook coming on in. It's good to see your sister Hollins. Good to see y'all come on in. Find you a seat somewhere in your house or in your car, wherever you are. We are definitely finna get into this particular word tonight because God is doing some great things in my life, and I'm quite sure he is blessing you in your life as well. So again, as you know, we have a very interesting um, biblical theme verse that we're working with is it found in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11, where Paul is letting the church of Corinth know that no one can lay any other foundation besides the one that is already laid, that which is Jesus Christ. And I know a lot of you tried to build your foundations on different things, different people, different things in terms of credit, your finances, your career, you trying to build your foundation, but check this out. That foundation will not last because some people want to be seen. Some people want to just be all over the place, but not in the place of Christ. So again, you got to make sure your foundation is something strong that is foundational that something can last for you and that way you only can have something built that strong only in jesus christ so again it's good to see many of y'all coming in it's good to see you evangelist bean on the book loretta Givens, come on in here it's good to see y'all get some seats come on in good to see everybody on zoom tonight to well as well so to god be the glory welcome y'all in come on come on let's get it going so what I'm going to do is provide us with a word of prayer. Let me start this recorder and we are off to the races. Let me see. Oh, here we go. Here we go. So, okay, so let us pray. Dear Father God, we come before your presence this night, thanking you for all your many blessings. Lord Master, we thank you because you look beyond all of our faults and you saw all of our needs. Master, we just come asking forgiveness that you will forgive us for all of our sins and all of our transgressions. Father, also forgive us for any unconfessed sin that has been not brought to you yet, but we are bringing it to you now. Father, we thank you for the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, the one who leads us to all. And Lord, we just thank you for all your people who are on Zoom that's coming up in. We thank you for everybody on Facebook tonight. Lord, we just want to uplift your name and give you the glory that you deserve. And Lord, we just want to invite you into this place, wherever we are, whether we are at home, in our cars, or wherever we are, to your presence, to learn your word and study your word, to understand, Lord, you want us to listen and pay attention to the Holy Ghost, who is the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, the Ruach, the mighty rushing wind. Lord, we just thank you, thank you, thank you for sending your son, Jesus, who was sent 2,024 years ago who died at Calvary for us. And Lord, we just want to praise you and give you everything that we have that's in our power to give back to you. And Lord, we just want to thank you and praise you on tonight. And we ask all these blessings in the matchless, priceless name of Jesus Christ's name, we pray, amen. Amen, amen. amen. So again, it's good to see everybody. Oh, and tonight is a special night because a lot of you may have heard over the many of years, I keep echoing this when it says, this day is April 18th, 1993. Something happened in my life on this very day where I received the new birth of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost entered into my body 
And ever since then, God has been doing some very miraculous things. And I'm just really excited. And hey, 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 tonight is the night and today is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. And let us be definitely glad and rejoice in it. And we are definitely rejoicing. I know I'm rejoicing because this is a spectacular day for me because my life changed on this day. And it's good to see what God is doing all of this time in my life. So glory be to God. It's good to see y'all on Facebook. Man, love y'all to death. Come on in here. So again, tonight we are dealing with building your house on solid ground or basically building a strong foundation in 2024 because I know some of us have already been hit and it's already the fourth month. Somebody may have gotten hit in January. Somebody may have gotten hit in February. Somebody may have gotten hit in March, and this is April, and we are halfway through April, y'all. It's April 18th. This month is just about over. For some reason, this one is moving very quickly. I'm not sure if it had anything to do with the eclipse that was on April 8th, and y'all do know what's going on 40 days from now. That's the day of Pentecost. Let me leave y'all on. Y'all just thought April 8th was something. Y'all didn't even know 40 days. I think that's uh, May 18th or something. Listen, Y'all got to keep game what's happening because when that eclipse hit, it passed and put a dark cloud over seven cities that was named Nineveh. And y'all remember Jonah was sent to go preach to Nineveh and they had to get their act together in 40 days. Well, guess what? 40 days from April 8th. Let me leave y'all alone. Y'all not ready for that kind of teaching. Let me leave that alone. Well, guess what? Tonight, we're going to get right ready and moving into tonight's lesson which is why we must listen to the Holy Spirit and the reason and purpose. Let me share something with you. At the beginning of the year, I was talking to you, going over the fact it is important to listen whenever the word of God is being preached or taught because Jesus gave the illustration with two individuals in Matthew chapter seven. He talked about one person was wise and the other person was foolish. And you have to make sure that you're listening at all times to the Holy Spirit. Reason why I started off this way is because we talked about the parable of the sword. I'm really drilling in the importance of listening because when you're at church, you need the Holy Spirit to help you listen to what the speaker, teacher, or preacher is saying. And those are your tools, which is your ears. You don't have to go get any tools from Home Depot or anywhere else. You have to get your ears in order to listen because that builds your faith. It says, how can they hear without a preacher? And how can they preach except they be sent? This is all dealing with listening. And the whole point I've been driving, working up to this point, because you notice the lessons now are involving a lot of attention on the Holy Spirit, because you have to be able to listen to him, the third person of the Godhead, the Trinity, the triune God. You have to be able to listen to what he's telling you, leading you, and guiding you. Listen, you will not hear an audible voice as God used to speak to the children of Israel in the Old Testament. He's going to speak quietly to your heart. It's like something is deposited into your heart to show you and lead and guide you. It's kind of hard to explain, but when you've been walking with the Lord for many years, let me tell you something. I understand what they meant when I something got a hold of me. Well, something got a hold of me on April 18th, 1993. But the only reason why I want to penetrate and talk about this reason, why we must listen to the Holy Spirit and the reason and purpose Listening is vital to the Christian believer because we have to listen to God himself and for him to lead and guide us throughout our own walk and journey. Why? It's to help others get saved in our family, some of our friends, our co-workers, and those around us in this life. We're on this journey and God did not save you just for yourself. See, a lot of you think you got yours and you cool. That's not how this works. Jesus didn't even have to come. So if he's come to you in your life, you have to help somebody else. It's a shame you got people in your house that you haven't even shared the gospel that Jesus still lives. We got children. 
sons, daughters, your husband, your wife, whatever, boo or whatever. I don't know what you got, but you need to share the gospel with whoever and whomever, okay? Well, what it is, well, look, listen at this, how to listen to the Holy Spirit. And I know these are some questions somebody might would like to know. It's good to see your brother Slocum. Good to see your brother Ramey in the house tonight. Listen, how to listen to the Holy Spirit? Because sometimes people is listening for a voice. No, the Holy Spirit is going to speak to you in your heart. And that way you will see how this works. Somebody's still probably listening, trying to figure this thing out. But the Holy Spirit plays an important role in helping us walk along God's path of life that he has. In Romans chapter 8, verse 6, we see that the Apostle Paul draws a clear contrast between the results of ignoring the Holy Spirit and the results of listening to the Holy Spirit. See, the Holy Spirit has probably been trying to tell you something today, but have you been ignoring the Holy Spirit today or have you been listening the Holy Spirit. That's between you and the Holy Spirit. He says, so letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death, but letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. And that's why a lot of you might not have peace in your life because you have not been letting the Holy Spirit control your mind. Jesus said to Paul, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. You see, and if you don't have Jesus in your mind and on your mind, well, that's an old term called the little shop of horrors, the devil's workshop. See, you got to make sure that Jesus is on your mind. And I remember back in 1993, I actually asked God to make sure you are on my mind all the time. And guess what? He did that. Good to see you, brother Marquis. Come on in here. You see, as a Christian, you have been given the life and the gift of the Holy Spirit. You see, Romans chapter 8, 11 says that what? The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. Yes, Jesus got up on the third day, he rose. And that same Jesus who rose from the dead lives in you tonight. Going even further, Paul insists that one sure sign that you're a part of God's family is that Follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Because in Romans chapter 8, verse 14, it says, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are called the children of God. I like that. You see, to be led by the Spirit, we first have to listen to the Spirit. Listen, oh, y'all listen to everybody else, but why you don't listen to God? Somebody might call or text you right now, and you might respond. How can we do that? How can you be led by the Holy Spirit? Well, I'm glad you're here tonight. You're at the right place at the right time for the right reason. Listen, it will help to grasp the four ways through which the Holy Spirit speaks most often. I'm going to share with you four ways in which the Holy Spirit speaks most often so you can be listening to him and he can show you the way. Number one, the Holy Spirit speaks through God's word. So if you're trying to figure out how does the Holy Spirit speak, well, you got a Bible in front of you. You got the app or you got the book, either one. He's going to speak through his word. The Bible is called the sword of the spirit. That's talked about in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. Good to see you, Richard Palmer. That's my doctor. Come on in here. You see, Ephesians 6 and 17 says, because through it, the Holy Spirit reveals the truth that equips us to fight against the lies that come at us from all directions. Did somebody lie on y'all today? Or, or are you telling lies on somebody? Let me ask you again. Did somebody lie on you or did you tell a lie on somebody? Or you about to do one later after Bible study? Let me leave y'all know. Number one, the Holy Spirit speaks through God's word. Number two, the Holy Spirit speaks to our spirit. I'm trying to help you tonight how to listen so you can listen to be the Christian that God wants you to be, the child of God, the man of God, the woman of God. Listen, the Holy Spirit speaks to our spirit. 
There are times when the spirit will speak directly to us. Romans chapter eight, verse 16 says, perhaps even through a dream. Oh, I've had plenty of dreams. He might prompt you to do something uncomfortable. And that's the problem. A lot of y'all are too comfortable. A lot of you in your comfort zone, you are in your little nice cozy place. Well, let me remind you of something. Did you not know your sin is a sale for you? Let me rewind that. A lot of times when we are caught up in a particular sin, it's a jail cell that you are in bondage with. And guess what? It's a very comfortable cell. But the Holy Spirit makes you uncomfortable so you won't compromise what he's trying to do. He may tell you to say something that someone else needs to hear. And that's what I'm telling right now. Listen, that was number two. Number one is what? The Holy Spirit speaks through God's word. Number two, the Holy Spirit speaks to our spirit. Number three, the Holy Spirit speaks through circumstances. Oh, it's good to see you, Sister Quanda Scott. We got these eagles in the house tonight. Let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit speaks through your circumstances tonight. If you're not listening, God go make sure he gets your attention. As I keep telling you before, God wants to see you on Sunday. See you. I'm going to just use the letters because we are familiar with I see you, aren't you? Well, guess what? God wants to see you so he won't see you and I see you. Then you get your attention. That's how he gets your attention and I see you. But I want you to understand God wants to see you. All the signs around you are pointing in the same direction. It is a good bet that the spirit is using them to get through to you. Sometimes things will happen that only can be explained by acknowledging God's interventions. Oh, yeah. Y'all got some situations and some circumstances. God is trying to get your attention. And some of y'all still not listening. Some of y'all are hard headed. What's so funny, some of y'all head is hard as steel. That's why you're not getting it done and getting it through yet. Number four, the Holy Spirit speaks through other believers. Yeah, just as you might be the spokesperson for the Spirit in someone else's life, someone else might stand in as the Spirit spokesman in your life. But you have to be careful because y'all get these people that run up to you in Target, run up to you in Walmart, run up to you at McDonald's and say, the Lord told me to tell you something. Well, guess what? I don't even see you at church. How in the world the Lord told you to tell me? I don't see you in Bible study. I don't see you praying. I don't see you at church. I don't see you, but I see you at the club. I see you at Rancho. I see you all over at the Paramount and I see you at the Concord Pavilion, but I do not see you. But you got the nerve to tell me the Lord told me to tell you something. Well, let me tell you something. Come to church and then tell me what the Lord said to you. Let me keep this thing moving because some of y'all do not understand what I'm saying to you. Last week, we discussed the four important elements to remember. And it's okay for the people on Zoom, if you want to unmute to help me out, if you got your notes, come on in. Some of y'all on Facebook, y'all can go ahead and chime in too. It's good to see you, Gregory. Hey, hey, good to see you, doctor. Well, let me tell you something. Last week, we discussed four important elements to remember. And what were they? Number one, let me help you out. If somebody got their notes, you can go ahead and say it on Zoom. If you want to unmute, listen. Number one is draw near and listen because God is speaking to you. That's number one. Do we got somebody want to unmute and tell me number two if you got your notes? Nothing will be the same again. Oh, my goodness. Did I hear that correctly? <laughs> Nothing will be the same again. Let me tell you something. When we finally listen to what he has to say, nothing will be the same again. I'm telling you because I'm a witness on April 18th, 1993. Nothing has been the same in my life since then. Let me tell you something. The reason why 
some things are the same. What did Humpty say? Same song, Digital Underground. Some of y'all got the same song playing and the record scratched. It ain't even went nowhere. It's just going blah, 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 blah. And you haven't even got the record over with because why? You doing the same song over and over again. It's the same thing. Same people in your life. Same stuff you're doing. Same cussing. Same drinking. Same Hennessy. It's the same thing. Nothing has changed because you don't want to challenge the changes in your life. Yeah, that's number two. Nothing will be the same, but y'all still dealing with the same people, same click, same crowd, same text messages, same posts. Let me leave y'all alone. Number three. What's number three? Be uh -oh. quiet and stay calm. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me somebody got to be quiet or shut up? Be quiet and stay calm because God has the best perspective on your life. Yes, he does. But some of y'all can't stay calm. Some of you can't be quiet. You're loud and obnoxious. God cannot get to you because you too loud. You flamboyant. Nobody told you to wear that yellow suit today. Looking like Big Bird. Let me tell you something. You're going to have to tone it down. Tune it down so you can hear what God is trying to tell you. Be quiet. You have one mouth, two ears. Some of y'all got four mouths and one ear. Why is that? Because you talk too much. You never shut up. Does that sound like Run DMC or Houdini somebody? A big mouth. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Listen, this says be quiet and stay calm. Y'all don't even know what calm is. That's why you got calamities in your life because you're not calm. Number four is what? Make a commitment and keep it. Oh my goodness. Why are you keeping that commitment with her? And you, why are you not keeping your commitment with God? Why are you keeping your commitment with him? But you can't commit, commit, keep your commitment with God. I don't understand this. We didn't commit it to people, human beings, but you haven't committed yourself to God. Make a commitment and keep it. Don't play any games with God. But some of y'all like playing. God is not playing checkers or chess with you. God can stop and end the game and make it game over. Some of y'all are just like dominoes. Y'all keep falling over for everybody else, but you haven't fell on your knees to God. We talked about some specific questions about the Holy Spirit and what were they? Who is the Holy Spirit? That's one. Another one was, what does the Holy Spirit do? Oh, we working with this Holy Spirit tonight because some of y'all don't even know who he is. All y'all say is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, or God the Holy Spirit. Do you know what you're saying? Do you know that he lives in the believer? Did you know he showed up in Acts chapter 2 for the birthday of the church? He indwelled the believers at that time. The Holy Spirit didn't dance and move in their feet so they can dance. He moved in their tongue. So when he speaks, you're going to hear a different speech in somebody's mouth. Isn't it interesting that the Holy Spirit didn't go into their feet so they can start dancing and stuff? Isn't it interesting that the Holy Ghost did not go in their hands so they can start clapping? Uh-uh. The Holy Ghost entered into their tongues. So that's the first sign that somebody has been saved. Your speech is different. You're not quick to cuss somebody out and say, Lord, forgive me. <laughs> See, some of y'all got that two fountain. James says, how can sweet water and bitter water come out the same faucet? Some of y'all got that faucet on a little warm water, and some of y'all got that cold water. You got to figure out which faucet you going to be. You going to be a bitter water or a sweet fountain? Which one? But I'm going to let y'all figure it out. Listen, it says, where is the Holy Spirit in the Bible? 
we're going to learn some things tonight about the third person. Who is the Holy Spirit? That's a good one. Well, guess what? The Holy Spirit is God himself. You see, the Holy Spirit is an equal among and a true member of what is known as the Godhead. That's just another way of describing the three in oneness of God. I like that. You see, the Godhead is made up of three equal persons living in a perfect unity with each other. It's good to see you, Cecilia. Good to see you, Tahara. Good to see you, Sheila. Good to see you, Sonia. Y'all come on in here. Listen, let me help y'all out. We're talking about the Holy Ghost tonight because we've really been talking about how to listen. Jesus spoke to two men and they listened. The key element is now learning how to listen to the Holy Spirit. You see, in the Old Testament, God used to talk out loud so the children of Israel can hear him. But they didn't want him to talk out loud, so he departed by the eastern wall, and that's called a Ichabod. A lot of you are trying to listen for a voice. You're not going to hear James Earl Jones. You are not going to hear somebody from the Ten Commandments. I'm trying to help you tonight. You're not going to hear God speaks to you. Listen, cut it out. The Holy Spirit is going to speak directly to your heart. And I'm trying to help you listen to him. The Godhead is made up of three equal persons living in perfect unity with each other. Believing is so vital to understanding the power and the role of the Holy Spirit that plays the life, the role in the life of the Christian and the way God is active in the world today. Did y'all know the Holy Spirit is restraining evil forces right now? in spiritual wickedness in high places, as Paul talked about in Ephesians chapter 6. We war not against flesh and blood, but spiritual wickedness in high places, princes in their palaces. It's a principality thing. The Bible verses in this section show that the Holy Spirit is God. They describe Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit interacting and existing in a community with one another. Listen. Let me help y'all with some of this stuff. Let's go back to Genesis chapter one, verses one and two. Listen, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, period. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and what? And the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. See, the Holy Spirit has been here, but he wasn't inside the believer yet. In the Old Testament, he dwelt up on man. I'm going to show that to you later. Listen, at the time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan River. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. That's why you see a dove in our logo. I'm on this. I got this. One West Sydney logo got a dove in it. I know what I'm doing because he told me to do it. Listen, and a voice came from heaven saying, you are my son whom I love and you I am well pleased. That's Mark 1, chapter 9, verse 12. Let me ask you tonight, is God pleased with you tonight or are you trying to please somebody else? Listen, God wants to be pleased with you but you're trying to please him. You're trying to please her. You're trying to please this. You're trying to please that. It's enough trying to please everybody. We need to please God. Acts chapter 15, verse 8 says, God, who knows the heart, showed that he accepted them by giving the Holy Spirit to them, just as he did to us. That's Acts chapter 15, verse 8. Here's another good one. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, which is the love chapter, verse 14. Am I going too fast to try to make sure y'all get these verses? Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14 says, May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Hopefully he's with you tonight. It's good to see my folks on Facebook tonight. Listen, God in Acts chapter 2, verse 33, said what? God has raised this Jesus to life, 
and we are all witnesses of it. I'm a witness tonight because I found out April 18, 1993, even though I was going to church, I didn't understand it because I only went Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter. I was a CME Christian. That's the only time. But now I'm fully indwelt, engulfed with the Holy Spirit in me, leading me, showing me, and guiding me. And it says, God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are witnesses of it. Are you a witness to it tonight? Exalted to the right hand of God, he has raised from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. Yes, he's here. Is he in you? Listen, the Bible teaches that the Holy Spirit is God. If you are a follower on Facebook, if you are a follower on Zoom tonight, follow of Jesus. These verses prompt you to thank God for giving you his spirit. He didn't have to do it. It helps you see that the Holy Spirit is worthy of your honor and love for him. Oh, some people wish they had the spirit right now. Some people wish they had the Holy Ghost to direct them. Y'all saw somebody today in your presence did not even have the Holy Spirit in them, but you did. Did you share a word with them? Listen, what does the Holy Spirit do? Well, I'm going to tell you what he does. The Holy Spirit has many different roles, but the first thing to understand is that the Holy Spirit is given to the people who believe and Jesus and bind them together with God and help them because they have to be more like Jesus. Amen. Did you hear what I just said? You have the Holy Spirit in your life because Jesus has to bind some things into you and help you to be more like him. That's what the Holy Spirit's job is to make you just like Jesus. For Christians, the experience of eternal life does not begin at death. But when we trust in Jesus and God places his spirit within him. That's what he did to me. 1993, April 18th. And that's what today is, by the way. Now it is God who makes both us and who stand firm in Jesus Christ. He anointed us. He set his seal of ownership on us and he put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. You see, there's a lucrative investment that the Holy Spirit being deposited in your heart and in your life. God has some good interest coming back on you. But oh, if you go be a bounce check in front of God, you better ask yourself, why are you running around here bouncing these checks? There's something in you to make you better, make you stronger, make you wiser, make you be led by the Holy Spirit. Throughout the Bible, the Holy Spirit equips people for ministry. He gives people specific insight and wisdom. He teaches people how to interpret God's word. I don't know this book on my own. There's the third person in me helping me understand this book. I did not go to no seminary. I ain't went to no college because he will give me more than what a professor can give me. Somebody asked me, what Bible college you went to? I went to the same one John the Baptist went to. I went to the same one David went to. I went to the same one Paul went to. I went to the same one Moses went to. I went to the same one Abraham went to, Jacob. I went to the same one. Going no doggone college. Let me tell you something. I'm not knocking it. You can go, but it's the same thing. As long as I got my shoes, if you want to get your shoes polished a little more, go right ahead. Did you not know people are sitting in these seminaries don't give a hoot about Jesus. They just want a paper. Uh -huh. All right. That's your uh, motivational speakers. All right. And different type of cults and other religions and denominations. Don't give a hoot not born again. Your professor not even born again. A lot of y'all go in these seminaries, sitting in them classes and get mixed up because you're not rooted in the word of God yourself. 
-hmm. get twisted up like a pretzel in there looking like golden root. Let me leave y'all alone. He communicates with the Father on the people's behalf and empowers Christians to live according to God's design. Let me tell you something. Here are some Bible verses about the work of the Holy Spirit. He lives within followers of Jesus and produces lasting change in their character and life. Galatians 5 and 22 and 23 says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The reason why they got self-control last because a lot of you are out of control. Did you not know if the Holy Spirit is in your life, you go be under control? Against such things, there is no law, Paul said. He teaches the truth about Jesus Christ. Here's another one. In John 14, 26, but the advocate, the comforter, the paraclete, the ruach, the mighty Russian wind, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. He sent them in Jesus' name to teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. He says what the Father tells him to say. That's how this thing works. John 16, verse 13 says what? When he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. So you don't get it twisted, but you got the truth. He gives believers the power to share their faith. You mean to tell me you've been a Christian and you ain't told nobody how good God is today? Somebody got a problem. Houston, we got a problem. You will receive power. Acts chapter one, verse eight says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you mm -hmm. and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and all the ends in the uttermost parts of the earth. Did you not know the book of Acts is constructed on this one verse here? Mm -hmm. A lot of you have Jerusalem starts off first. Why is that? Because that's in your home. Man. Your home is Jerusalem. Then when it says all Judea, that's your neighbors. Mm. And Samaria, that's the other, that's the outside part of the city. Yeah. Then when it says the ends of the earth, that's the world. The whole book is broken down on this one verse. Please tell me y'all didn't know that. It's all right. You learned something tonight. The book of Acts, all 28 chapters, is built on this one verse. He produces God's love in human hearts. Uh-oh. Good to see you, nephew. Good to see Glenn in the house. Come on. I'll see your brother, Maurice Cotton. Come on in here. It's good to see my folks. And hope does not put us to shame. Why? Because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. That's Romans chapter 5, verse 5. The Holy Spirit is a promise of great things to come for those who trust him. Do you not understand that God has a way of doing things? The Holy Spirit has great things to come in your life if you trust and listen to him. Listen, Ephesians chapter one, verses 13 and 14 says what? I'm so glad you asked, what does he say? Or what is he saying tonight? You also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, when you believed, you were marked in him with a seal. See, I was sealed on April 18th, 1993. The promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Did you not know you're God's possession tonight? I need to remind you of that. You're God's pro uh, possession tonight. Listen, he gives people the skills and abilities they need to share God's love. 
These are sometimes called spiritual gifts. Yes. See, I did not ask for any of this. He gave it to me, but I wanted it refined and to become better. I said, Lord, I don't know anything. If you show me this book, I'm just going to show it to other people. Very simple request. That's all I've been doing for 33 years. That's it. Hebrews chapter two, verse four says, God also testified to it by signs, wonders, and various miracles, and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. Did you not know the Holy Spirit looks in every church, looks at the people that come in and out and sees which gifts can be used to edify the body. Did y'all hear what I just said? It's amazing how everybody want to pick out one gift. You can't pick your gift out. Why is it everybody wanted the gift to speak in tongues? Which amazes me all the time. But nobody has the gift to interpret. Do y'all think God is not intelligent? God will not put you to speak in tongues and don't put nobody else to be edified. That sounds very selfish of you. So you're going to have a heavenly language and don't share it with nobody? But I know y'all hear a lot of strange things. But listen, it was a sign for the unbeliever. It wasn't a sign for the believer. This is all talked about in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 14. Chapter 12 and chapter 14. Those are the gift chapters. Then Paul says something like this. If there's nobody there to interpret, be quiet. God is not into this long range of thing. You sing in a solo, speak in tongues in a solo. He wants everybody to be edified. Did y'all know the Greek word for tongues? It's so simple. The word tongues in the Greek means language. Languages. That's it. If I was to speak fluent Spanish right now, y'all would know that the Holy Ghost has allowed me to do that. It's not what you hear today. All this gibberish and stuff. People speaking in tongues, but don't go to church all the time. People speaking in tongues, don't go to Bible study. Somebody help me understand if God's word is in his Bible, but you speak in an unknown language to God all of a sudden. Those two don't go together. Why don't you speak something out of the Bible that we can hear and know and go find it in scripture and chapter with you? Why you got to act like you got something more than everybody else? Let me leave y'all alone. The Holy Spirit is unique and creative. The more you learn about him, the easier it is to recognize his presence in your life. Good to see you, Keely, tonight. Listen. Where is the Holy Spirit in the Bible? I'm so glad somebody asked me that question. My eyes starting to water a little bit. Jesus is so easy to find in scripture. In a sense, he is everywhere. But we also have four books known as the Gospels, which are biographies of his life specific specifically. In the book of Jeremiah and elsewhere in the Old Testament, we see clearly references to God as the Father. This also shows us how Jesus often referred to him when he was teaching. But at first glance, it may be unclear where the Holy Spirit shows up in God's word. And yet more you know what to look for, the easier it is to find him throughout the scriptures. For the very first verses until the last. Let me tell you something. The following verses are examples. I wish I had a towel. Let me get a towel. This is a little too thin. You see, the Bible begins with the Holy Spirit present at the creation of the world. Did y'all hear what I just said? A lot of y'all think the Holy Spirit showed up in Acts chapter two. No, no, no. 
He is part of the creation of the world. The following verses are examples tonight where the Holy Spirit shows up in the beginning of the creation of the world. He says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I told you the earth was formless. Darkness was all over the face of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. These are the very first verses in the Bible, y'all. The spirit is present from the very beginning. He didn't show up in Acts. That's why a lot of y'all acting up because you don't have the spirit in you. <laughs> Let me help y'all tonight. The reason why you acting up is because you think the Holy Spirit showed up in the book of Acts, but he's been here. The Holy Spirit lived within Moses as he led the Israelites to the promised land. Listen, do y'all realize that the Lord said to Moses, gather for me 70 men of the elders of Israel. I might ask this biblical question to see if anybody got their notes on their numbers. What does the number 70 mean? See, I'm going to pop one out at you every time. You got to get ready. You got to know this stuff. The number 70. Good to see you, Minister Perkins, on here tonight. Listen, the number 70 always references to the house of Israel. Why do you think when Jacob left out of his land, he went into Egypt with 73 score and 10? Listen, God told Moses to get me 70 men of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be elders of the people and officers over them and bring them to the tent of meeting and let them take their stand with you. See, God telling them to come on up here, stand before me. Let me check y'all out. Let me examine you from head to toe, whip to whip, up and down. Let me look at you. And then in Numbers chapter 11, verse 16 and 17, listen what God says. And I will come down and talk with you there. God told Moses, get 70 men, elders of Israel, get by the tent and come down, take y'all stand, and I will come down and talk with you. Did God come down to talk with y'all today? I'm just asking. Did y'all have, have a little talk with Jesus today? And he says, and I will take some of the spirit that is on you and put it on them. Oh, did we just find out that the Holy Spirit is on you instead of in you in the Old Testament? Well, you better write that verse down. And Psalms 51 also, David said, take not thy Holy Spirit away from me after he murdered Uriah to sleep with Bathsheba. These are passages letting you know that the Holy Spirit was up on man, not in him yet. In Acts chapter 2, He's inside of us now. He's in me. Listen, he says, I will take some of the spirit that is on you and put it on them. And they shall bear the burden of the people with you so that you may not bear it yourself alone. In other words, God was telling Moses, I don't want you to get burnt out with these people. I need some people to help you serve. Y'all just need you to focus on your word. That's why we have deacons. That's why we have ministers. We have associates. That's why we all work together so they can deal with other things while the man of God stand to deliver the mail. Listen, as the Israelites wandered in the desert for 40 years, Moses did not have the capacity to care for every single Israelite. Did y'all know Moses left out of Egypt with 2.5 million people when they crossed the Red Sea? God the Father came up with a plan to take the burden of leadership off Moses and distribute it to other Israelites. That's why it's important for people to come to church to show up and work, not to sit down, sit in the pews, look around, look funny at other people, watching other people what they wear, talking about people behind their back, not just to sing in the choir, not just to be a deacon. No, you need to serve instead of being served. That's the problem. Everybody want to be served instead of serving. The Holy Spirit bestowed upon these people God's power 
to fulfill the road he had for them as the Israelite nation moved forward tonight, the Holy Spirit continued leading God's people to this day. Good to see you, Brother Deion Jones. We got eagles in the house tonight. Listen, the Holy Spirit gave King David the word to say. What did he say in 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 2? He said, the Spirit of the Lord spoke through me. His word was on my tongue. Let me tell you tonight. Some of y'all need to have the Holy Spirit and the word on your tongue tonight and start having a joint up to your mouth. Stop cussing people out, talking crazy, talking behind people back. You need to make sure the spirit on the Lord spoke through him, as David said. So the word was on his tongue, but y'all got a joint or a cigarette or something up to your mouth. Let me leave y'all alone. King David was arguably Israel's most beloved king, but he also failed spectacularly. Just like all of us, David was far from perfect. I'm glad I'm not perfect. My feet are made of clay. I'm trying to get this thing together every day. I love how when I'm on the freeway on 680, I'm passing each exit and out of the blue, the Lord just tells me to ask forgiveness for all of my sin. I ain't did nothing. I'm in my car by myself. That's because when you walk with him and you understand your condition, I'm a sinner saved by grace. During the first half of his king, David, as he reigned, David had a close relationship with God and obeyed him. That's what this is about. This verse is an example of the Holy Spirit empowering King David to effectively lead the Israelites. King David foreshadows Jesus the coming perfect king who spoke and acted in the power of the Holy Spirit when he was on earth. Good to see you, Mary Newton. Come on in here. The Holy Spirit prophesied about Jesus before the Son came to the earth. I'm showing you the Spirit is at work. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1 and 2, it says a shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. Oh, from his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, and the spirit of fear. Did you hear what I just said? The spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. He would have the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. That's seven. Seven spirits will rest upon Jesus, who's the stump of Jesse, and the branch that will bear fruit. Oh, y'all didn't catch that. That's seven. Jesus is fully complete to do the job. That's why they call him Wonderful Counselor. You see, this prophecy describes Jesus as the true king of Israel and says he would be full of the Holy Spirit as he lived a life full of, father, full of the Father's wisdom, clarity, and knowledge. He was the fullness of God in the flesh. John 1 and 14 says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. That was the walking, talking Bible. That was the real living word. It was a talking word. This word that sits in your book, it speaks and talks to your heart. It talks to your spirit. Mm. The prophets in the Old Testament were filled with the Holy Spirit to speak on behalf of God. You mean to tell me these prophets had the Holy Spirit that we're talking about tonight? They sure did. Come on, Ezekiel, if you take the stand. Ezekiel chapter 2, verses 2 and 3 says, The Spirit came into me and raised me to my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. He said, Son of man, I'm sending you to the Israelites. Did you not know you cannot do God's work without the Holy Ghost? So it's amazing to me why some pastors, preachers, and bishops don't have the Holy Ghost, but they up speaking. 
That's why people fall asleep. No spirit. Let me leave y'all alone. But as for me, Micah got in on it. Micah the minor prophet said in Micah chapter three, verse eight, he says, but as for me, I'm filled with power, filled with the spirit of the Lord and with justice and might to declare to Jacob his transgression to Israel's his sin. <laughs> That's what he said. Both Micah and Ezekiel were prophets who demonstrated powerfully what it looked like to have the Holy Spirit guiding them. Is the Holy Spirit guiding you tonight? Do you want to feel it tonight? They spoke what the Holy Spirit impressed upon them to speak and work hard to persuade and motivate the Israelites to turn from their sin and obey God. That's why I'm trying to work hard so we can listen, so we can build our foundation on the solid rock Jesus Christ and not on sand so you're not a moron as the Greek word moros for foolish. Trying to help somebody tonight. Oh, John the Baptist witnessed the spirit descending on, the, on Jesus Christ. He saw it. John chapter one, verse 29 through 33. What does it say? The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and he said, behold, the Lamb of God who come to take away the sins of the world. This is he whom I've said. He comes here comes a man who ranks before me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but for this purpose, I came baptizing with water that he might be revealed to Israel and bore and John bore witness and saw the spirit descend from heaven like a dove and it remained on him. And I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, he on him, you see the spirit descend and remain. This is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. Wait a minute. Let me tell you something. You see, John the Baptist baptized with water, but Jesus baptizes you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. You want the fire baptism? That's the one I got on April 18, 1993. See, I was already baptized with the water, but still went out the door and did another one. I needed the another one that John the Baptist was talking about. And I need to ask you tonight, have you been fire baptized or you just been sprinkled? Sprinkle me, man. That ain't gonna get it. You gotta go fully immersed under. You gotta go under the water. Some of y'all need to stay under the water a little longer. You came out too quick. Some of y'all should have got dunked, stayed under there for about 10 or 20 seconds. Let me leave y'all alone. <laughs> Listen, this passage brings us to the New Testament and the start of Jesus' ministry. Does anybody know the age Jesus started his ministry at? 30. 30 it is. 33. Yeah, he died at 33, but he started his ministry at 30. I like it. That's good. I love it. Listen, the Holy Spirit came down from heaven and remained on Jesus for the rest of his earthly ministry. Jesus himself was filled with the Holy Spirit in order to carry out his ministry. How do you think he got to Calvary? He didn't do that on his own. He had the Holy Ghost. Luke chapter 4. Verse 18 says what? The spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of the sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free. Somebody need to be set free tonight. Jesus said these words to the Israelites while they were worshiping God in a synagogue. He began his ministry by telling his friends and family that the Lord's spirit is on me for a specific purpose. Did you tell somebody in your family that the spirit of the Lord is upon you? 
for a specific purpose tonight. Trying to help somebody tonight. Have you told somebody in your family? Did you tell your son? Did you tell your daughter? Did you tell your husband? Did you tell your wife? Did you tell your brother? Did you tell your sister? Did you tell your mother? Did you tell your father? Did you tell your grandmother, grandpa? Did you tell them that the spirit of the Lord is on you? Or are you telling them something else? What you want to eat? What channel is that? Who won the game? Is that what you're talking about? Listen, Jesus spent a lot of time talking about the Holy Spirit and wanted his disciples to understand the power of the Spirit. He even told them that it was better for them that they leave because then the Holy Spirit would be sent to them. Some of y'all need to leave some people. Some people need to leave it, leave that, leave them so the Holy Spirit can come to you. Jesus was the master teacher showing us how to important, how important it is to listen to the Holy Spirit to fulfill the ministry work that has already been laid for you to walk therein to accomplish his will for your life tonight. Let me tell you something. God got something for you. You have to trust him and believe that he has your best interest out for you. And guess what? What's four plus four? Eight. It's eight o'clock. And that is enough because y'all remember the show called Eight is Enough? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, eight is enough and we made it and we got Amen. this thing done. Let's give God Amen. some praise in this place tonight. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's good Amen. to see all my Facebook family on here tonight. Amen. I love y'all so much. It's good to see all the Zoomites on here tonight. To God be the glory. We made it. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Let me give y'all the word for the week tonight. Oh, boy. Here we go. Let me give y'all this word for the week. It says, why do we call it rush hour when nothing is moving on the freeway? <laughs> Something always, you know, I'm always under, I'm trying to figure out why do you call it rush hour, but nobody going nowhere? See, a lot of y'all are the same way. You going nowhere fast. You okay, stuck. Please. You pulled over. Yeah, he almost you know where you're going. Oh, is that mama? Is that mama? I hear mama. Blessed lesson tonight, Dr. Holy oh, Lord, Spirit. There she is. Oh, hey, what a blessing. What a blessing <laughs> to have the Holy Spirit. But I thank God that he lives in me. Hallelujah. Hey. All right. Now. Hallelujah. I know she know a lot about the third person of the Trinity. <laughs> Amen. Now, oh, do I know him? It's oh, a blessing man. to know Jesus. The oh, songwriter says it's, it's good to know him. But the blessed part, Resurrection Sunday, you oh, can yes. stand up and say, He rose in me. Oh, so that's thank you good. again for each and every one. I love everyone. And thank you so much. Hallelujah. Oh, thank everybody for the prayers, too. Thank you so much, Mama. We see Jehovah Rapha. Hallelujah. Timothy is at work. And he's, he's not. Out of this is just the beginning. A lot of them saying they love you, Mama. They, they, they're giving you shout outs. They're saying, hey, Mama, it's good. Uh, Sister Hallelujah. Said, awesome, blessed lesson. Thank you. She said, Mama, hey, it's good to hear you, Mama. Oh, I, 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 I got my second win now. I think I can make it now. Oh, I'm good now. Yeah, with the help of the Lord, you can. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I hear that voice. We doing like a co-pilot. We doing, you high five. Hallelujah now. I hear you. All I right. You. Okay. <laughs> so thank God for everyone. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Again, the word for the week is, why do we call it rush hour when nothing is moving on the freeway? <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. Amen. So at this moment, we're going to go ahead and do the most important part of Thursday night Bible study, which is discern the Lord's body, Holy Communion, where you have to basically, if you got a piece of cracker or a piece of bread and some juice to acknowledge the Lord's body, said, do this in remembrance of me to show forth my death and suffering till I come again. And that's what this is all about. Man, I love y'all so much. To God be the glory. And we want to keep uh, the Muhammad family in prayer uh, was a situation that occurred 
um, um, evangelist Bean told me about someone was murdered. I think at the at the the gas station, or it was a liquor store, or some store across the street. People are just taking people's lives carelessly. So we want to remember that family. Mm. To God be the glory. It's good to see all of y'all tonight on Facebook. I love y'all so much. I thank y'all for your undivided attention because there's so much else. Everything else is going on in the news feed, but we want to always make sure we have the gospel on the news feed. Make sure the good news is on the news feed. So hallelujah to that. Whew, I feel like I'm out of breath, but I'm going to be okay. <clears throat> to God be the glory. I love y'all so much. Uh -huh. um, so what I'm going to do is pray a prayer for each and every one of us that is on Zoom and those of you who are on Facebook tonight. To God be the glory. Um, let us pray. If there's any questions or comments, I forgot. Is there any other questions? Anyone had anything on their mind? Anyone on Facebook had any questions? Good to see y'all. I love y'all all so much. Man, to God be the glory. I love all your comments here. God is blessing all of you for chimed in on Facebook tonight. I love y'all so much. Good to see all of you who are on Zoom tonight. To God be the glory. You all are so amazing. We cannot do this without all of you. Good to see Sister Jamila in the chat room, Sister Coleman on Zoom chat room. Love y'all so much. Well, if there's nothing else, all minds are clear. Let us pray. Dear Father God, we thank you so much for what our eyes have seen and what our ears have heard on tonight. Lord, you are so worthy to be praised, glorified, and lifted up because there's definitely none like you. Lord, we thank you that we are trying to learn to listen to the Holy Spirit. We're trying to be attentive to what God wants us to do in our lives so we can help our families, so we can help our friends, we can help our co-workers and loved ones. Lord, this is all about your word being deposited in our lives. So when we pray, we can pray your word back to you. So your promises can be stood upon and your word will not fail and come back void. Lord, we thank you for my mother tonight that Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth thee, is healing her. Lord, we thank you for anyone under the sound of my voice on Facebook or Zoom that is dealing with any infirmities, any sicknesses, any congestion, nasal passages are stopped up, any coughing, sneezing, itchy eyes, sciatic, any pain or suffering. Lord, we rebuke all of that in the name of Jesus right now. But Lord, we need thee every hour. Lord, we are so thankful that you sent your son 2,000 years ago to die for us. And we all would love to have a right to the tree of life and eternal life. But we must repent of our sins and confess Jesus as Lord of our life and believe that he died and rose and rose from the dead on the third day for our justification. Lord, on tonight, we thank you for every Zoom listener, viewer, and caller. Father, we thank you for every Facebook person who glimpsed by for even a second and kept moving along the news feed. <clears throat> Lord, we pray for the peace of the city of Jerusalem. Lord, we pray for the Muhammad family tonight. Have mercy, oh God. And Lord, we are so thankful for your word on tonight. And Lord, as we transition as a prayer of forgiveness for all of our sins and all of our transgressions, we ask that you remove anything that's not right within our sight. Lord, if we spoke to someone, looked at somebody, or said something, or just thought something inappropriately about somebody, please forgive us. Lord, if it's your will, cover us from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet with the blood of your son. Lord, forgive us for any sins of omission and sins of commission. Lord, forgive us for any unconfessed sin tonight. Lord, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you again. And we ask all these blessings in the matchless, priceless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 At this point, if you just want to grab your sacraments, I'll be just right back in about 30 seconds.
Okay, I'm back. And as we hold this bread, this is symbolic of the Lord Jesus Christ's body. He said, do this in remembrance of me to show forth my death and suffering till I come again. And he broke the bread and gave it to him. And Lord, you said, do this in remembrance of me to show forth my death and suffering till I come again. He said, take ye all of it and eat. And they all did eat. <laughs> And Lord, we did this not for the nourishment for these mortal bodies, but we did this for the nourishment for the soul. And when Jesus poured the fruit of the vine, this is symbolic of the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on Calvary. That is a representation for the New Testament and for the New Covenant. When he poured it, he said, drink ye all of it, and they all did drink. And Lord, we did this not for the nourishment for these mortal bodies, but we did this for the nourishment for the soul. <clears throat> so as we know, it was nothing but the blood that saved me. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. Hallelujah. One day, one day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you for your blood, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Have my daughter. God bless you. Kara and Kara. God bless. All right. Tell them you said hi. Bless everyone. <laughs> Love each and everyone. Love you. All right. Good night. Good night, Mom. All right. Well, y'all be blessed. Love y'all so much. Got a hot one on Sunday for you. So if you want to tune in through Facebook or show up, either way, it's all good. It's all fine. It's Amen. all hot and oven, ready to go. So I love you so much. It's good to see you, Mama. Love you. Be up there tomorrow. Hang in there. Jehovah Rapha is at work. All right. Okay. God bless. Love all right. Love y'all. Good night. 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 Have a good weekend. All right. All right, Mama Jordan. <laughs> Here, have a good night. All right, okay. good night.